Hey yo guys, I'm Lon here from Alone in Oasis. I'm your host today. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I believe everyone asks me how do I fertilize my plants indoor. So I, uh, to be honest, I get a lot, a lot, a lot of messages from around um, people from different countries, different um, continentals. They asking me, "Hey, hello, how do you fertilize your platyserum indoor?" So I guess this video is gonna answer all the questions that you guys are gonna ask. So um, today I'm just gonna talk about what kind of fertilizer I use and um, how do I maintain my plants. We fertilizing them with, with a really regular basis. When and how? That's one thing. The second one will be how do I control the pest problem here? When you get a platyserum, we usually mount it in a moss ball, like what you see here. So uh, outside the layer is a moss, but inside there you can see exactly a cocoa husk beneath there, with a layer of moss covering it up. So the intention is to prevent rotted roots inside the moss and also it creates more um, aerations for the root system to grow better and it is also for easier for people like us to control the watering frequency. So how do you know that we need to water a plant is to get a touch and try to feel the moss. If it's dry to touch, I guess it's time for you to do the watering. There's no certainty and absolute schedule that you have to fix it a time to water the plants so you gotta feel it you gotta be more attentive to the plants to observe them daily or maybe regularly to see whether the plant needs watering or not there's a few signs or telltales that you can know that whether the plants need watering first of all is the the plants front is getting droopy and floppy so you know that the plant needs some water and the second thing is like i mentioned previously you can touch the moss if you feel if you feel that it's dry to touch it's good to go so let us demo how do I water the plants and also how do I fertilize them. So I use two kinds of fertilizers. Most of them are natural base, which is extract from plants. And uh, one of them is the civet. Civet contains all the trace elements that and also the essentials, nitrine, uh, nit nutrients that the plant needs. And another one is the amino acids, which derive from soybean extracts. But uh, two of them is actually good for plants to grow. It can enhance a microorganism to grow in the, in the plant's uh, root system. And also, it can also enhance a plant immune system. And it's a concentration. That's why we have to make sure it's diluted. And then to submerge the plant into a bucket of water. So let us show you how to do it. I have two buckets here. Usually it's a basin for the plant to shower. I will shower my plant occasionally. At the same time, when I water, I will add in the uh, fertilizer. So I'm gonna add in fertilizer when, whenever I try to water my plants. So approximately once a week. So this is how I'm gonna measure it. If you have a measuring cup, you can use a measuring cup. It's one uh, equal, I think one to 1,000 ratio. So for me, I'm gonna go with my feeling and my gut uh, heuristic. I'll just pour a little bit more. And uh, stir it well. I'm gonna use my hand. So, let's see. Slowly, you don't want to destroy the, front, uh, the fertile front trichomes. You don't want to scratch it. You just slowly put it in. And you will see the bubble. You can see the bubble, right? Okay. When you see the bubble, it stops emerging. I guess the plant has a really good drink right now. So I'm gonna hang it here to let the water drip off. And voila! It 
So after I watered the plants with uh, concentrations water fertilizer, so uh, there's another way to fertilize your plants whenever you try to mount it on board, is to put a slow release fertilizer into the moss together when you mount it on the board. I'm gonna show you how I do it. So, in general, I'm going to use two types of um, slow-release fertilizer. It's Vita Coats from the plant doctors. One is Leaf Booster, another one is All Balance. Usually, I'm just going to use the All Balance slow-release fertilizer. And this is a technique that I learned from Mr. Fong and Ray Ray. Whenever you try to add in a slow-release fertilizer, because it's a granular form, right? Imagine if you pour it into the moss ball, you water it into water buckets, it will float everywhere. So to prevent it to fall apart, you're gonna use one tea bag. You can get it everywhere. I think from Daiso or Mr. DIY for Malaysians on here. <laughs> Just put it in here, you know. A really good sufficient amount will do. Alright, close it. So you tight, tuck it behind it. You can have a look here. Usually, just look for here. Take it out. Yeah. This is the place that I gotta tuck it in. You can see the behind there, there's a gap between. Just tuck it there. It's okay, no need to worry to destroy the plants. This is the old front, so it's fine. As long as you don't destroy the new front here. So tuck it in, and voila. It's good to go. Usually when I have a big plants to fit it into the buckets, what I do is I will hang it here and, and I will use a watering can Collect the water. And water it from the top. That's all. Alright, um, now here's the common problem to globe platyserm indoor is air ventilations. When you have bad, bad airflow, you will encourage more bacterial problem and fungal problem inside the room. It's gonna trap inside the room and it will gonna create a lot more unnecessary disease in your platyserm. So we're gonna prevent that to happen. First of all, you need to have a really good airflow like us. I will open the fan 24 hours a day. And I'm gonna use another method to prevent that to happen is to add in some beneficial uh, micro biofungicides. So I will add it together with my seaweed fertilizer into the bucket of water. So at the same time, when I water them, it will contain two substrates inside there. One is the seaweed, another one is the biofungicide. And of course, with the Vita code that I added previously, I think that's sufficient enough for your plant to grow healthy and lush. So uh, let me show you how to identify there's a fungal or disease in your platyserum. Come closer to have a look. This is a really common bacterial infection on uh, platyserum. You can see the old fronts, right, is covered with a lot of a bad fungal or some sort of a bacterial disease. So what we're gonna treat here is to add in some beneficial micro um, fungicides to encourage the plant to grow beneficial microbes to fight back the disease. So. You can see here, the new fawn is growing really healthy. 
and from what I observe right now, it's doing fine. If it's, the symptom is keep on occurring, we will encourage you to bring the plants to grow it outdoor and it's not suitable to grow indoor anymore. There's plenty of plants that we need to observe and to see whether it's suitable to grow in your conditions. If it really cannot grow under the circumstances that you're trying to provide to them, do not give up. Just try to shift around, see what's the best condition the plant trying to fit in. So if you cannot grow indoor, please grow it outdoor. There's no obligation here. Let me show you how I'm gonna use that. So I'm gonna add in some, uh, we call it powerful microbes, also from the plant doctors. All right. Just add in a little bit, we'll do oopsie. All right, but it's fine, too much is okay. Cover it tight. Same here, I'm gonna do it my way, using my hand. Also try to take note that when the plant has bacterial infections, do not try to share them in the same bucket of water. It will be really contagious and spread to another plant that is really susceptible to bacterial infections also. So be aware of that if you try to share the common buckets, try to make sure the plant is healthy, then you only share the bucket of water. So after we covered all the subjects that we don't want to talk just now, fertilizing, create a good uh, air ventilation to prevent disease and bacterial infections, and the least, and also the really common problem that we have is pest control. So how do you control the pests? It's a really subjective questions and also answer for you guys. So um, not to boast it, I do not have a lot of problems here. Occasionally some uh, scale efforts, but not so much. Whenever I try to see the plant is uh, infected severely by uh, um, scale, I'm just gonna eliminate them, try to treat them with neem oil. Um, and that's all the maintenance that I have to do here. So I strongly believe that when the plant is doing healthy and is growing strongly, the pest problem is the only least problem that we will have to concern of. So try to make sure the plant is growing healthy and then you will not need to worry about the pest, disease, uh, pest problem. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna treat them with some diluted neem oil and uh, for maintenance uh, purposes, I'm just gonna spray them on the leaf but do not wipe them away because of the trichome. I will never wipe them away. So just uh, shake it and then spray on the area that is infected with pest problem. Let me try to find some scale. Oh. Try to look for underneath fronts, right? They usually will hide underneath the fronts, you know? And bear in mind, I'm gonna use uh, neem oil whenever I see pests occurring in the plants. So in a regular basis, I don't really use a lot of uh, neem oil on my plants or so. Yep. This is what I do for pest control. That's all for today guys. If you have any questions and uh, whatever things that you want to see in the next video, please drop your comments below in the comment box and uh, please like the video and subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you so much, bye. That's all for today guys. If you have... Oh, <laughs> 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 what is that? Lori. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>